Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mud Management with the Mud Multiflow Mud Flow Pump, hosted by Weir Minerals Australia and Semco Publishing, the owner of North American Mining Magazine, the Asia Miner, MinersNews.net, Rock Products, Cement Products, and Concrete Products. My name is Donna Schmidt. I'm news editor for the Asia Miner and editor of North American Mining Magazine and MinersNews.net. With me today is our main presenter, Aaron Schott, who will begin his talk in just a few minutes. A little about Aaron. He's a business manager for the applications engineering at Weir Minerals Australia. He has held multiple roles within the company, primarily with the multi-flow product, specializing in formulating the engineering design of electric and diesel dewatering pump solutions for both Australian and international customers across the mining, municipal, and agriculture industries. During his tenure with Weir, Aaron also completed a significant amount of work developing and designing new fuel management systems within the HydroFlow brand. Today, he'll be talking with us about the multi-flow mud flow solution, its history, and how the pump can be integral to an advanced site's dredging plans. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, first, all attendees are set to mute. If you have a question, look for the Q&A function on your screen and type it in any time during this presentation. We'll have a segment at the end for Aaron and his team to respond. Also, while this is a live webinar, we will be recording it and making it publicly available. You'll receive the link in the coming days and it will be, excuse me, and in it will be contact information for both myself and for Aaron. We welcome you to share the webinar with colleagues and friends and do not hesitate to ask questions after the event should we run out of time to address them here today. With that, I think we're ready to get started. Aaron, I'd like to toss things over to you to tell us more about the multi-flow mud flow solution. Thank you, Donna. Hello, everyone. And as Donna mentioned, my name is Aaron Schott and I'm Applications Engineering Business Manager for Weir Minerals Australia, based out of Coolum, Queensland. My role is solely within the multi-flow brand, which looks after any pit dewatering style applications. To kickstart today, I'm not sure who's joined us on this webinar, and naturally I would assume we have many people with a varying degree of knowledge and exposure on this topic of mud management. So I'll do my best to be as broad as possible to make sure everyone can follow on. Once again, at the end of the webinar, we'll have a few Q&A questions to hopefully answer any burning questions that may present themselves throughout. A little bit of background and introduction to the Weir Group. For those who don't know, the Weir Group is a global engineering business that was founded over 150 years ago with the current headquarters based out of Glasgow, Scotland. If we step within the framework of the Weir Group, it has two separate divisions, the Minerals Division and ESCO Division. Within the Minerals business, there is a broad range of brands in which one of them being multi-flow dewatering. The multi-flow dewatering brand, unlike most other weir brands, has a global reach and we design not only products but working engineered solutions to send all over the world for any given application. Most of which are all engineered and built right here in Coolum, Australia. All right, let's get stuck into the content. So today's topic is mud management, and in particular, we'll be doing a deep dive into one of the new innovative baseline products offered by the Multiflow brand, being the Mudflow. The Multiflow product looks at tackling this muddy market, hence the creative trademark name. Global industry and markets are very familiar with pumping, handling, and transporting slurry style fluids. Some examples that come to mind for most of us in which some of you today may be highly familiar with throughout your line of work or general exposure are minerals processing, tailings relocation, sewage and wastewater. In addition to this, the slurry pumping technique is also actively used in production of steels and cement, just to name a few. The slurry pumping industry dates back as far as 200 BC with the Archimedes screw pump and since then, there have been many players in the game, but none do it better than Warman pumps, which was invented by Charles Warman back some 80 plus years ago, in which has been acquired by the Weir Group in, 20, uh, in 1999. Excuse me. Global industries and markets, however, are no, not so familiar with pumping, handling, and transportation of mud, sludge, and spoils. 
Some example of mud management applications include the clearing of runoff pits and drainage sumps. Identifying the core differences between the two, slurries are more defined, consistent semi-liquidous mixtures, typically with known suspended solids, which are generally consistent in sizing and do not contain any foreign material. Oppositely, sludge and spoils are less defined, highly variable semi-liquidous mixtures, which is made up of inconsistent particle sizing containing large amounts of foreign materials. In addition, generally speaking, mud, sludge and spoils cleanup activities aren't processes that generally generate income revenue as they are more of a burden which can be quite a costly exercise to maintain at acceptable levels. The accumulation of buildup of mud, sludge and spoils over time within active or decommissioned mining and runoff storage pits creates a diverse problem throughout many key areas within the major mining, municipal and ag agricultural industries. As you could imagine, once these runoff pits and drainage sumps are full, they must be cleared to ensure that they do not interrupt day-to-day -day operations or furthermore create a workplace health and safety concern. Generally speaking, when these runoff pits and drainage sumps are full or at regular maintenance intervals, the contents are transferred to another more suitable location. The conventional method of pit clearing and relocation of its contents is using the truck and shovel method. And as the name suggests, it is simply an excavator or bucket style loader, which shovels loads of mud, sludge or spoils into the back of a haulage tipper truck. The trucks are then driven and dumped at a designated waste location elsewhere. In larger operations, multiple loaders and multiple haulage trucks are used to complete the task as quickly as possible to ensure minimal interruptions to the day-to-day -day operations. Of course, the cost and effort involved in pit clearing exercise is completely dependent on the size of the task at hand and the type of material to be relocated. For some of the generalised mining applications, this activity is by no means a small nor cheap exercise and can easily amount to a multi-million dollar budget based on the extensive amount of people required and therefore labour hours, machinery costs, as well as operational fuel costs. In addition to this, machinery which would normally be used to extract raw ore from mining areas and transport it to the processing plant may be used to conduct these pit clearing exercises. This may amount to losses in production rates and volume. And again, this significantly compounds the true cost of the activity. This conventional truck and shovel pit clearing method, as it generally will involve multiple mobile machinery pieces to complete the task, has a considerably higher carbon footprint, as the vast majority, if not all, of the mobile machinery are diesel powered and therefore does not lend itself to sustainable practices. So what we here at We Are Multiflow set out to achieve is to create a working solution which offers increased safety practices for clearing and transporting mud, sludge and spoils safely across site, reduce OPEX and CAPEX expenditure required by conventional truck and shovel methods to complete dewatering, increase the availability and efficiency aspects of pit clearing operations by creating a solution that has the ability to be operating continually without impacting mining operations and critical machinery used in ore production. Minimize or even completely remove people from the process to reduce human error and complacency, which could lead to potential injuries and fatalities. Furthermore, significantly reduce the carbon footprint associated with the process. And finally, creating a highly sustainable baseline solution that has the ability to further be refined to utilize alternative power generation sources as technology advances, for example, wind, hydrogen, solar. And with those pride points in mind, the Weird Multiflow team, after a decade of engineering, conceptual design, and refined improvement, we have developed the Mudflow pump range. And as I previously mentioned, the inspiration for the mud pump design comes from the warm and range of heavy duty slurry style pumps 
in particular, the Warman Gravel or G series pump range. Some of you may be familiar with the model as it has been around and available to the market for many decades now. Warman G pumps are generally constructed with larger internal clearances and thicker wear components, which aims to create a perfect mix between a robust component and construction, low speed operation to reduce wear while maintaining higher operating efficiencies. In addition to this, the, mul uh, the mud flow pump end is a purpose built submersible style pump end, giving it identification more similar to a Warman MGS pump, which stands for multi-flow G series submersible. Here in the image, you see a complete engineered to order mud, mud flow solution in which would classify this as a pontoon mounted dredge configuration. This particular model is a diesel over hydraulic mud flow, model 200. What you can't quite see in the image is the brains behind the system with regards to the operator cabin and controls, as well as the power pack. In this specific example, the power pack uses a 260 kilowatt diesel powered engine, which drives the hydraulic system and in turn operates the pump and side cutter agitators. So as I mentioned earlier, coupled with Warman's 80 plus years of slurry pumping expertise, the multi-flow brand alone provide, prior to Weir's acquisition in 2008, has over 45 years in design expertise of floating and mobile dewatering pumping solutions. This combination of experience goes a long way when creating a highly reliable floating pontoon mounted dredge configurations. The mud flow pump designs combine the Warman MGS pump end with hydraulic side cutter agitators fitted with ESCO excavation teeth to provide long wear life and efficient pumping. The hydraulic agitators aid in processing slurries with heavier solids up to 1.5 SG. The mud flow pump can be supplied as part of a complete floating pontoon mounted dredge solution with Linotex discharge hose pipe work, plus any additional system boosters dependent on the head requirements of the overall system. Alternatively, the mud flow pump end can be supplied to simply mount onto a common earth moving equipment such as hydraulic excavators. As you see in the image to the right, the pontoon mounted dredge configuration are designed to be launched, dragged or pushed from one location to the next using mobile machinery as the design incorporates dozer push bars and heavy duty underbody hard ox style skid runners. Some application examples of where and how the multi-flow mud flow pump can be used includes tailing storage facility management, harbor and marine maintenance, sand and gravel mining, maintenance of water storage capacity in retention ponds, slimes removals, from sludge ponds, land reclamation. In addition, the multi-flow pump end can even be retrofitted to competitor OEM dredges. As we all know, sustainable solutions are the forefront of creating a better future. In comparison to other OEM dredges, the mud flow pump offers improvement on pumped efficiency of up to 15%, which works out to be a very significant power draw and OPEX saving over 12 month operational period. Think of that saving alone over a period of 10 to 20 years in which the general lifespan of a multi-flow dewatering pump unit. The mud flow is a single piece of machinery that can be operated by a single onboard operator or alternatively, we can supply operate, optional configuration for the unit to be remote operated from a central site control room. The mud flow design having a single power source reduces the carbon footprint of the task. Internally, we have an extensive material science division in which we develop application specific materials to improve component wear life characteristics, which in turn reduces the requirement amount and frequency of replacement spare parts being required. 
And with regards to safety and environment, all of the pumped material remains fully contained within the transfer pipeline, ensuring the surrounding environment remains clean and contaminant free. The multi-flow mud flow pump features include a hydro hydraulic driven wet end, which has been specifically engineered to provide efficient pumping of highly charged and abrasive slurries. We're proprietary specially designed ultra chrome A49 chrome alloy casting to provide higher wear resistance to high wearing components. Hydraulic motor engineered to handle high liquid specific gravity, SG. High solids com handling capacity. Bespoke suction strainer to prevent clogging in applications where very large solids are present. It isn't uncommon within these runoff pits or sumps to have small tree branches, rocks, and other foreign material enter the pump end. So this is important. A quick hitch plate attachment to allow ease of fitting and removal of hydraulic excavators. Dual detachable variable speed hydraulic side cutter agitators. The side cutter agitators rotate in the opposite directions, pushing the material in towards the pump's inlet suction. In the current range, we have two sizes available, being the model MM150 and the model MM200, with ongoing engineering development to create a broader product range. The naming convention is simple, whereas the MM denotes multi-flow mud flow and the 150 or 200 sizing denotes the size of the pump ends discharge connection. The multi-flow mud flow pump range is capable of operating within the following design parameters. Mud sludge and spores with a specific gravity range of 1.05 to 1.45 and we generally like to target somewhere close to 1.3. However, we have actually had reports that one of the mud flow 200 models in the field was in fact producing well in excess of the 1.45 SG limit. However, the advertised rated limits that we will warrant is performance up to 1.45. The mud flow range is capable of pumping between 150 cubes an hour and 1200 cubes an hour of flow and up to 82 meters of head. If we look into the two models specifically, the smaller model, the MM150, has a flow rate range of operation being 150 meters cubed to 680 meters cubed with a head of up to 72 meters. And the larger of the two models, the MM200, has a flow rate range of operation 220 meters cubed to 1200 meters cubed with a head of up to 82 meters. Both these pumps are capable of pumping large particle slurries with particle sizes up to a max of 80 millimetres or three inch. Maximum temperature of the pump slurry being 35 degrees Celsius, max solids concentration of volume of 20%, max solids concentration by weight being 55%, with the depth of pump submersion can be as low as 15 metres below the surface. When it comes to selecting the correct pump for the excavator mount application, we can do it one of two ways. The first being the standard engineered solution whereby the customer has a specific model of excavator ready in use on site, whereby we can define the design duty condition based on the predetermined limits of the excavators onboard hydraulic system. Or alternatively, we can reverse engineer a solution and we can nominate the sizing of the machinery required to operate the mud flow pump based on the design duty requirements provided by the customer. This example would be more common if the site or the customer did not already own or are operating a hydraulic excavator on site. The sky's the limit and with our applications engineering team, we will investigate every opportunity to create a fit for purpose solution as really in the real world, we know that almost no two applications are the same. The hydraulic powered side cutters, like almost everything else in the mud flow product design is a multi-flow proprietary design. 
the hydraulic side cutter attachments are fitted with weir esco ultra lock teeth to achieve excellent solids agitation prevent premature bake breakage and tooth loss ensuring continual operation while uh, again minimizing the likelihood of costly downtime the cutters have a number of different configurations to promote the best type of agitation specific to the application. For example, each side cutter can be featured with either six ESCO teeth for a model CB32 or nine ESCO teeth for a model CB33. The model code here is that CB represents the words cutter blade with the first digit being three, which defines the three cutter blades per agitator and the last digit being two that defines on each cutter blade, there are two teeth. Each ESCO tooth has an integrated lock design, meaning there are no additional or separable pins to order, lose or mismatch when fitting the replaceable teeth. Cutter teeth are easily installed and can be safely re removed using industry standard mechanical wrenches and prior tooling. And finally, the cutters for a pontoon dredge application can be operated using a variable speed controller. Just a quick note here, for any excavator mounted applications, the side cutter agitators are controlled at a speed ratio only. Whereas for a complete pontoon mounted dredge application, the cutters are fully controllable and operate independent of the pump end. In terms of infield evidence, it is always good to share a case study example. And thanks to the team at PPA in Indonesia, we have exactly that. This unit is the very first mud flow pontoon dredge unit, which was built by the multi-flow team back in 2020 amidst the early days of COVID-19 and commissioned into service later that year. PT Putra Pakasa Abadi, I'm hoping I've said that right, or better known as PPA to us here in Coolum, Australia, is a full service mining coal mining contractor that specializes in overburden removal and run of mine coal hauling. It was identified that one of the mine sites they operated being PT Borneo Indobara, or BRB, located in South Kalimantan, Indonesia, had a problem with their sedimentation runoff dams as they would continue to fill rapidly and would be continually clearing them out due to the extensive and heavy rainfall within the region. On initial estimates, the PPA operations team estimated that there was over 2,500 metres cubed of mud contained within their sediment sedimentation dams that required clearing. As we have an excellent long-term working relationship with PPA spanning many decades, they approached us directly with their problem to see what we could design to come up with a solution. As a result, the Weir multi-flow team designed, fabricated, assembled, installed and commissioned an engineered to order mud flow MM200 mounted to a pontoon dredge. In addition, as the length of the transportation discharge pipeline was quite long, to engineer a complete working solution, we had to supply additional inline multi-flow diesel slurry powered, diesel powered slurry booster pump units. The entire process from initial decision to purchase through to the finish of on-site commissioning took approximately six months. And as a result, reported savings operating at a current, at a design flow rate of 400 meters cubed for an average of 20 hours per day was approximately 40% reduction in mud processing costs combined with a 60% reduction in mud processing time. It's fair to say they were extremely happy with the outcome. All right, I do have a brief four minute video which explains the journey from day one, understanding the customer's PPA's problem all the way through to the recent times of operation. Let's check it out. So PPA are one of our major customers in Indonesia. They're based in Southern Kalimantan. They have a, an issue with mud because of the significant inflows of water they're getting through rainfall in that area, and we're helping them deal with that problem. Uh, 
at a meeting, PPA brought up the subject and asked us for an opinion on what could be done. What the problem is with the mud is it flows into the mining face. To continue to mine, they actually need to remove that mud via either a trucking method or a pumping method. And just coincidentally, we were uh, producing the Mudflow 200 and uh, we showed them what we had and how they could use it in their application. This Mudflow 200 submersible press pump uh, that we supply to PPI is the first uh, in the world. The solution was built here in the Coolant facility, which houses our DCO, so our Design Centre of Origin. PPA were heavily involved in how it operated, where it could operate, and what ranges it could actually operate in. So we had constant input from them. In the initial stages, our multi-flow team uh, in Indonesia worked very closely with PPA to determine what their targets were. And working closely with the mine planners, we got a great understanding of exactly what their elevations and pumping distances were. Their parameters of what they were trying to achieve fitted perfectly to what the Mudflow 200 was capable of. Understanding their customer's application and the operations of dredging, we built the Mudflow 200 with the winching system so that we could manoeuvre the pump set across dams. Also, we fitted skid runners so that launching is done with conventional equipment such as bulldozers. Before we have the Mudflow submersible dredge pump, we have to excavate and we have to transport from the map area to our dumping point. Conventional method using trucks and excavating is very costly. With uh, map flow, we offer a more efficient way just to use one machine. With the pumping method, we operate continuously in average 20 hours per day. This is very uh, environment friendly. We just move the map along the piping system, so it's very safe and very clean. The solution we provided to PPA was the Mudflow 200 in connection by the pipelines with the MF125 slurry booster. That's another multi-flow product. When I first saw the Mudflow 200 go through the, the, the commissioning phases, I was pretty impressed with the volume of mud that was coming out of the unit. After we connected through to the booster system, the actual flow rate was higher than the customer's expectations. In the maximum capacity, uh, Mudflow 200 uh, could uh, produce around uh, 400 meters cubic uh, per hour uh, of mud. We estimate that the cost savings will be about 20 cents per cubic meter of mud pumped versus excavating. We've done a cost payback model and it looks as though it will pay itself back in three months with the project running in a span of about nine months. Mudflow 200, I think we could save it's around 35 to until 40 percent of our cost. 50% time reducing working together with the wind mineral. We are very, very, very satisfied. They just not only sell us the product, but they give us better value in after sales. <laughs> All right. In summary, a quick wrap up of everything we've covered in today's session. Multiflow can offer a complete pontoon dredge mounted solution or simply can be lifted, uh, limited to purely the multiflow mud flow pump end, which can be mounted to a quick hitch of an excavator arm. To date, Multiflow has designed and built five electric over hydraulic mud flow dredge packages, as well as a further four diesel over hydraulic mud flow dredge packages, all in which remain fully operational today. Multiflow can tailor the supply of equipment to include a network of series booster pumps and integrated transfer pipelines. Again, with 80 plus years of warm and material science technologies and slurry pumping innovation, we have a wealth of experience in where prevention to reduce the frequency of needing replacement spare parts and therefore reducing machinery downtime. We do offer multiple agitator types from physical cutter teeth in which I did mention earlier. However, in addition, we do also offer options of high pressure fluid sparger rings for line dam app applications. Again, I touched on it briefly. However, we do also offer 
options of remote monitoring and operational control. And finally, as the WEA Group is primarily a global engineering company, we offer complete bespoke solutions which can be engineered to order for any given application. So why choose WEA Minerals? We offer end-to-end -end engineered solutions. Decades of expert engineering experience across dewatering, slurry and fluid management applications. Lower total cost of ownership. This is something we focus very closely at WEA because not only is it important to know how much something costs up front, but it is also very important to know the true costs of running an operation over time to ensure that you are truly making the dollars stretch as far as possible. Generally speaking, WEIR products aren't always the cheapest solution, but the WEIR solution is generally the one that continues to operate when others won't. I'm sure you've all heard the saying, buy it right, buy it once. And finally, a global network. We supply our customers with an unrivaled global service network, which includes 28 service centers across the Asia Pacific region and over 200 branches across the globe. Of course, at the end of the day, all of us within the WE Group family, including myself, are always there to assist you with your every engineering need. And that brings us to the end of today's webinar. I'm hoping it was somewhat informative. Now we'll move on to the Q&A to answer any questions that you may have. So I'll hand back to Donna to assist with facilitating the Q&A functionality. Thanks, Donna. Thanks, Aaron, for the great presentation. Uh, very comprehensive and very insightful. I hope everybody enjoyed it. We have some time for a few questions. Once again, look for the Q&A function rather than the raise your hand function, and I will read your request aloud. Aaron is being joined today by his colleague, Cameron Murphy, for the forthcoming questions. While you're all thinking of what you'd like to ask, we have a question to get things started. So to Aaron and Cameron, what plans does Multiflow have to make these dredge pumps along with other dewatering pump units more sustainable into the future as the world moves away from fossil fuels to more sustainable sources. Yeah, thanks Donna, I can cover off on that one. Um, look, I, I think, you know, inherently the mud flow pump itself has been designed to be as uh, environmentally friendly as, as it can possibly be. Um, a perfect example of this is Traditionally, when we've been trucking and shoveling mud around mine sites, we actually contaminate a lot of the environment. So the mud flow is able to contain the mud and, and transport it to exactly where we want it to go. So from an applications point of view, we're, we're busy working on how we better perfect that. In terms of the manufacture, um, we has a lot of initiatives that we're working through. We, we use all green electricity in all of our foundries, including our Artarman foundry. Um, so we buy renewables for, for the power to supply the, the foundry. And we're also working through with, with all of our sub suppliers to ensure that they do uh, very similar. So making sure that we're as sustainable as we can, poss can possibly be. Okay, great. Um, how about this? How do you accurately calculate the CapEx and OPEX savings between the conventional truck and shovel method as opposed to the mud flow pumping method? Yep, again, I'll cover off on this one. Um, look, that's, that's again, there's a lot of variables that come into this particular calculation, but really what we're looking at um, is a combination of the cost of removal, so the fuel that's required and the downtime of the machinery that is actually required to, uh, to remove the mud in a normal truck and shovel method. And the calculating on top of that, the time that it's actually taking, um, as we saw in the webinar just previously, uh, sorry, in the in the video, the um, the example there with PPA just previously, it, it there's a savings of up to fifty percent in terms of time, and up to thirty five to forty percent in terms of diesel fuel burn. So, with those elements in mind, we can do a full calculation and and give a full cost of ownership uh, calculation to to any potential end user. Fantastic, thank you. 
Um, another question has come in. How are the complete dredge pontoon pumps packaged and transported globally? And how large are they in terms of mass and overall dimensions? I'll get this one, Donna. Uh, the smaller MM150 hydraulic excavator mount packages uh, roughly in the realms of two and a half to three tonnes in mass, approximately two-ish metres wide and two metres tall. Um, the larger MM200 complete dredge over diesel over hydraulic pontoon dredge solutions are approximately 35 tonnes complete assembled. Uh, and the overall dimensions span 10 to 12 metres long by just under six metres wide. And once again, with freight in mind, these are designed to fit inside three 40 foot containers. So they separate into three sections. Uh, and the same for the electric over hydraulic dredge solution, same mass, same overall dimensions and designed to fit into the three 40 foot containers as well. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it looks like I've got a sales related question. Hopefully you can answer that. Do you carry in stock these pumps which are readily available for quick sale? That's a great question. And um, the, the plan longer term is absolutely to carry these pumps in stock um, available for quick turnaround. Um, unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it the demand has been so great with the initial launch of this product that we've actually sold out of all our stock so we're busy trying to replenish but the, absolutely the plan is to keep these on the shelf ready for quick turnaround for our for our customers fantastic that's global correct that's right yep okay uh, looks like another uh, sales related. <laughs> what is the marketing pricing point of the mud flow excavator mount and the complete dredge solution? Um, so pricing is a hard one. Pricing is obviously highly variable with what's included, excluded, what the finished product actually looks like as they are generally speaking engineered to order solutions fit for purpose for every application. Uh, for example, the smaller MM150 hydraulic excavator mount packages are approximately two to 300,000 Australian dollars. Uh, with the larger MM200 complete dredge, uh, diesel dredge that is, uh, approximately budget pricing 1.2 to 1.35 million Australian dollars. Uh, and then with the electric variant of that one, um, as there is a bit more componentry in terms of variable speed drives, um, uh, electric motors, and a bit more electrical infrastructure required. It is a little bit more expensive, probably in the realms of 1.35 to 1.5 million Australian dollars. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we kept our um, webinar within an hour today, uh, being very early in the morning in Australia for all of our attendees there, uh, as well as in the evening for uh, those here in the States uh, where I am this evening. Um, I wanted to thank everybody, uh, especially Aaron and Cameron for the presentation and for the responses to the Q&A. If you didn't receive an answer to your question or you, perhaps you come up with a question after uh, we disconnect today, you can feel free to follow up with Aaron or myself. Aaron's email is aaron dot Aaron dot shot at mail dot weir m a i l dot w e i r. My email is d schmidt at semco publishing dot com. So that's d s c h m i d t at s e m c o p u b l i s h i n g dot com. Once again, this webinar was recorded and will be available in a shareable format in the coming day or so to all the attendees uh, and all of those registered. We will also publish the link on the social media accounts for the Asia Miner and for North American Mining. Weir Minerals and Weir Minerals Australia will also be sharing the event online. So thank you everyone for your time and interest today. We hope you'll be back for the next Semco Publishing webinar and we hope you have a great day. You may now disconnect.